A lot of you have reached out to me explaining to me that you have anxiety. Why do I have so much anxiety all of a sudden? Why do I feel depressed? Why is this affecting me mentally? Just having something wrong with my ear. I'm going to explain how there's an anxiety related link to our eustachian tube dysfunction problem. And I'm going to explain to you of why that is the case and what you can do about it and try to help you find some tools and some answers and actually just some calmness to get through it. When I was struggling myself, I didn't know that there was a direct correlation between having inner ear condition issues, eustachian tube dysfunction and anxiety. When you go in to see a doctor and you tell them I have this clogging, this swooshing sounds that puts up their antennas to think, oh, you have allergies. So they start looking in your ear. Most of the time they're going to tell you, you don't really have anything in your ear. They might put something in your nose. They check your nose and see, hey, okay, you do have a little inflammation in the nose. And then it's immediately a prescription and you're going to the, the pharmacy to go get allergy medication. You either get prednisone or you get some kind of allergy injections or you get some kind of allergy medication, some pills or something like that for those issues. But it's not really identifying the problem. It's not really targeting the problem. And then when you start consuming that medication, it can actually give you side effects like it did myself. When I started going the allergy route, because I was unaware that there was another route to go on, I started taking uh, like uh, prednisone. I started taking uh, these allergy nasal sprays. What that actually ended up doing was giving me this rebound effect. Basically what that is, is my nose was already clogged as it was, but as I continued to use that, it, it became a more of a uh, rebound effect where it actually made my nasal passages more inflamed and it gave me more problems in terms of dehydration issues now and that actually uh, exasperated the problem so what I want to explain to you are a lot of you out there that are struggling is that anxiety is going to come with this condition but being aware that you can kind of anticipate that it will arrive at some point hopefully you can bypass it but I want to settle everybody's fear everybody's concern about it that it is a part of this condition unfortunately and i'm going to explain a little bit of why it's a part of this condition because when you start having ear problems like most of us we don't correlate that with an anxiety problem we just think that oh maybe we're having anxiety because we have this condition that's lasting but it's not really the case there's a little bit more to it see the problem is when you have your station tube dysfunction you have issues with something called your inner ear uh, our vestibular section in our ear. Basically, that's the compound in our ear that gives us balance, that kind of helps promote our balance. Well, what happens is, is when you're in stress, you're dealing with this problem already, you start having stress responses. It could be histamine, cortisol. When this starts happening, it affects the vestibular area in the, in the ear. That affects the balance. Affecting the balance affects your proportion, how you feel, your equilibrium. You start feeling dizzy, a little bit off-centered. That is going to start increasing the anxiety and it's going to start making you feel in irritable and just wondering, why do I have this? Well, you start times in that by two weeks, three weeks, a month and even years. And over time, you develop now this habit of starting to relate anything with the ear to anxiety and, and vice versa. Anything with anxiety, you relate it to the ear. My triggers were driving on the road, going anywhere longer than five, ten minutes away. My stress responses were going up, being stuck on the freeway. This would start triggering the inner ear problems. This would start affecting my balance and it started giving me these weird funky symptoms. More clogging. I would have to do the Valsalva maneuver to kind of open the ears up for literally a second and it would go right back to being clogged and closed again. These are things that we're not really told in the doctor's office. And this is why I started uh, my channel primarily to explain how eustachian tube dysfunction is so misdiagnosed. You need to be told in those visits that anxiety will come, most likely. And when it comes, don't be alarmed by it. Because when you're al alarmed and caught off guard with that, you're going to start doing other things that don't really target the main purpose, and that's targeting the anxiety. Once you start to settle the anxiety, you start to lowering the stress responses, being more aware of things, you're going to naturally start calming down. When you start calming down, you realize that the ear will start to function the way it's supposed to blood pressure is going to be normal when you have inadequate blood pressure or blood pressure or blood blood pressure rises it's going to start affecting areas not only in the ear so a lot of you have found that once the ear starts having problems the jaw begins to have problems then the posture and then you start having soreness in the neck and then it's just like it's like a fire that starts small and it's just expanding 
Well, as things expand out of control, your anxiety expands out of control. And, and, the mean, and then while all this is happening, you're still taking nasal sprays and allergy injections and all these other things that are just going to give you more problems. So my message here is when you are discovering that you do have a problem with your ear, you do feel like you have eustachian tube dysfunction, be aware that anxiety is normal in this aspect of the fact that when you're trying to recover with this condition, the clogging and all these other stress responses, the histamines and the cortisol levels, this is going to trigger your anxiety. Don't be so alarmed by it. Do your absolute best to try to find some calming and be just be mindful that that's what comes with this condition because that's what's taking people off guard is that they don't know this is happening with them. They have this condition and all of a sudden, boom, they have this anxiety. And it's not your normal anxiety. It's not like before a test anxiety, before getting on a plane anxiety, or before a roller coaster ride anxiety, or just having normal day to day anxiety. It's a different kind of anxiety that not only affects you mentally and emotionally, but, but physically. And I want everybody to know that it's normal, not normal, but normal that it's happening and normal that you can get through it. You just have to do your absolute best to be mindful. And, and that's, I know that's easier said than done. But being mindful and being aware that this is a part of the process, uh, just like surgery, you know that there's a process intact, in not only just the surgery, but the, uh, the after effect of recovery. When you're mindful about things, you tend to be a, have a better approach about it, which also uh, triples your chances of getting through it and, and going through the process much easier when you are aware of what's coming. So I just want to leave that out there to you, all of you who are going back and forth trying to figure out where this anxiety is coming from. Are, am I losing my mind and all these other things that come up with this condition? You're not. Just know that it's a part of the rhythm. It's a part of the process. Once you get through that little hurdle, you'll start feeling better. I ask you all to subscribe to my channel so you can get the latest, greatest health and wellness videos, motivation, yoga, and meditation. But before I let you all go, i like to leave you with one thing. Being well is feeling well. Feeling well is doing well. Doing well is living well. Take care, everybody. Talk to you soon. And we will tune into the next video.